Hey guys, welcome back to another Rope and Ranch tutorial. Today we will be going over some just foundation uh, basics when it comes to genetics. So I wanted to show you guys just like the base amount of genetics so that you guys can kind of get an understanding and I'll do other videos later on to kind of explain the other genetics and the other things within the game. Before we get started, I would like to thank uh, Lady Ranger Gamer, who has been doing an amazing job at helping us um, just kind of raise awareness on us and uh, support us and show other people our game. It has brought a good amount of players in and it is definitely helping us become more of a very, very active community and that is just very, very amazing. So let's go ahead and get started here. Today I have just some regular base coats. So I've got a bay here, I've got a chestnut, I've got a brown, I've got a black, I've got a sandy chestnut, and I've got a seal brown. So I went ahead and I did uh, genetic testing on all of these guys. So. All of them should have their genotype up here for display. Let me get them all up for you guys. So to kind of start this whole learning process here, what is a genotype? Well, a genotype is going to be a genetic string of multiple different genes. So when it comes to um, genes, this gene right here is going to be the extension gene. And then this gene right here is going to be the agouti gene. So one gene, but two alleles. So in the sense that this single one right here is going to be called an allele, but them together is a gene. So Another way and another term we're going to be using here a lot is going to be uh, heterozygous and homozygous. Homozygous is going to be when both of the uh, both of them are the same. So both here we've got homozygous recessive because both of them are lowercase. Where here we've got heterozygous because both of them are different. When you get to some of these, this is going to be a homozygous dominant. So homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, and heterozygous are going to be how we explain that specific gene. Now, what makes up specifically the color is going to be the phenotype. Now, a phenotype is going to be the physical characteristic that expresses based on that genotype. So the way to remember that is genotype is going to be genetic, it's the genetic makeup, and the phenotype is gonna be the physical, actual thing that you see. So, that all being said, let's go ahead and move on here. So what do these genes actually mean? Well, the E is going to be the extension gene, which is also known as the red factor. In order for the red factor to show physically on the horse, it has to be recessive. The recessive version of this will produce red pigmentation all over the animal. The A stands for agouti, which is going to be the black pigmentation, but it's going to distinguish on where that black pigmentation actually goes. The recessive version of this black pigmentation spreads the black all over the body, where a dominant form of this will actually put it to the points of the horses. So in the sense of a black horse, it has no agouti, which means that that distribution of that black goes specifically all over the body, and it has a dominant extension gene, which means that that red factor will not come through. So a black horse can be homozygous or heterozygous for this, but is always going to be homozygous recessive for a black horse. When you come over to a chestnut horse, a chestnut horse is going to be recessive on both sides. Now, 
this means that it produces the red pigmentation. It's going to produce it all over the body. And when you do the A gene, the agouti, since there is absolutely no black that is going to be on the points, it's going to be evenly distributed across the horse's body, creating a chestnut. In the sense of a bay horse, they are going to be heterozygous on both sides or homozygous on both sides, but they have to at least have one dominant gene on both sides. So for example, this one has one on either side. So it has the extension gene, which means that the red pigmentation does shine through, and it has an agouti, which means that the black pigmentation goes and spreads towards the points of the horse. When it comes to the base color coats, black, chestnut, and bay, each of their genotypes are going to have two different phenotypes. So you can see that this is going to be homozygous recessive on both sides, and it is a chestnut horse. But if you look at this one right here, this one is also homozygous, but it is a sorrel. So all of the base coat colors will have different phenotypes. They will have two different phenotypes for each of the genotype makeups. So you can either, if you get a horse that is going to be homozygous recessive on both sides, it'll have a 50% chance of being sorrel and it'll have a 50% chance of being a chestnut. Now a chestnut horse, like we said before, just has to have the homozygous recessive of the extension gene because that is the red factor and the red will only express if it is going to be recessive. So if we go over to this horse, which is a sandy chestnut, it is going to be homozygous recessive of that extension gene of that red factor, but it is heterozygous for the agouti gene. So this is a sandy chestnut, which the other phenotype associated with this one is the honey chestnut. So both sandy and honey will look just like this, but they are a little bit different. Now, what this means is that all of this mare's offspring have the chance of carrying down an extra agouti gene to their offspring. So the other option is going to be the liver chestnut, which is going to be homozygous recessive and homozygous dominant to uppercase agoutis. That is going to be the liver chestnut and that is going to be the black chestnut. When it comes to the black horse, these are some of the other horses I'm using to explain these examples. When it comes to the black horse, the only two genotypes associated with, with black is going to be homozygous or heterozygous, but homozygous recessive for the agouti. When it comes to the bay, they will have four different genotypes, either heterozygous and heterozygous, or homozygous and heterozygous, or heterozygous and homozygous, or homozygous and homozygous. Now, if I haven't hurt your brain yet, hold on, because I'm almost done. The next explanation is going to be for the colors brown and seal brown. Now, brown and seal brown have a gene that's connected to the agouti gene. So you'll notice that the only difference between brown and seal brown is going to be the capital dominant A behind the seal brown color and the recessive A behind the brown color. In order to explain this a little bit better, I'm gonna try to go back to the beginning. Let's pretend we're talking about humans. We're looking at eye color. Everything about your eye color within genetics will be located on one, in one strand of a genetic makeup. Because it's all located in one space, that location is called the locus. So all of the information about the extension gene is located in the extension gene locus. 
Everything located about the agouti gene is located in the agouti gene locus. Now, sometimes you get some little genes that like to hang out in the same location, in the same locus. So that's how we get the T gene, which is also known as the tan. So now this becomes the black and tan gene. When the black and tan gene hang out, it creates a little different of a color for a horse. Since agouti is technically the location that the black will actually extend to, because if you remember, agouti is going to be if it's a dominant, it's going to take all of that black and put it to the different points. And if it's recessive, it's going to spread that black all over the body. Because of this, the adding the T changes the way that the black actually spreads across the body. So in the brown horse, we have it in the game where it's going to be a recessive lowercase a after the T. In a seal brown horse, it's going to be a dominant A after the T. These will also carry down with their offsprings and create different makeups. Seal brown and brown are the only two genotypes that only have one phenotype. So I made a little chart here to kind of show you guys all of those base coat colors. You'll see that they're grouped by their genotype. So in the top left corner, you have dark bay and copper bay, which both are gonna be homozygous dominant to heterozygous. Then you've got wild bay and bay, which are both heterozygous heterozygous. Then you've got cherry bay and golden bay, which are heterozygous and homozygous dominant. Then you've got mahogany bay and blood bay, which are both going to be homozygous dominant. Then we get to the chestnuts, which is going to be black chestnut, which is going to be homozygous dominant for agouti. We've got chestnut and sorrel, which are both homozygous recessive. Then we've got sandy chestnut and honey chestnut, which are gonna be homozygous and then heterozygous. And we've got the black, which like I said, is going to be either homozygous or heterozygous extension, but it's going to be homozygous recessive for that agouti. And then we show the seal brown and the brown, which shows the dominant agouti at the end of the AT gene or the recessive gene at the end of the AT gene. So for the rest of this tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how some of these genes actually work. So I'm gonna take my chestnut mare here and I'm gonna breed it to my bay stallion. Oh gosh, I forgot how many horses I have on the Rope and Ranch account. Give me a second. This is the one that I want, okay. So you'll notice that I'm breeding a horse that has recessive across the board to a horse that has dominant on both sides. Let's see what we get. Okay. So we ended up getting a sorrel, a chestnut. We ended up getting a chestnut. Now this chestnut, we already know that this chestnut is going to be homozygous recessive on both sides. Homozygous recessive on both sides. Now I'm gonna show you a Punnett square here and you're gonna see that we actually had a 25% chance to get this kind of outcome. The other 75% chances was either going to be a bay, a black, or a different type of chestnut, depending on which dominant allele actually transferred down to the offspring. So this time, we're gonna go ahead and do this sandy chestnut with a black. 
so we're gonna go into breeding we're gonna go find my mustang out of or mustang we're gonna go find my morgan out of all of the morgans that i own on this account because i just put a ton in sales and wild and we're gonna go ahead and breed this chance And we end up getting a cute little black colt. Now, let's see what his genotype ended up being because there's two that associate with the same. So he ended up becoming heterozygous and homozygous. Now this test was kind of a trick question. We had a 100% chance of getting a black foal. But, as you can see by the chart here, it was split 50-50 on either being homozygous dominant for the extension or heterozygous for the extension gene. But both of those phenotypes would have become a black offspring. So when you're doing Punnett squares and stuff like that, you have to make sure that you're looking at both the genotypes and the phenotypes on what that foal is actually going to be. I'm going to go ahead and end this tutorial right here. I'm going to be doing more videos like this in the future. I'm going to do some that explain the cream, show the genotypes and the phenotypes, and show how you get the more complicated genetics. And then I also plan on doing another one which explains like some of the other markings and overlays that we do plan on doing in the future. If you want to check out our videos over the Overo or even the Pattern Gene or the LP Gene with Appaloosas, I've got videos like that already up on the YouTube video channel, so feel free to drop by and take a look at those. But other than that, everybody have a lovely afternoon and keep on ranching!